For each of the following exercises, sketch a graph of the function as a transformation of the graph of one of the toolkit functions. Okay, so if you're using the OpenStax textbook, the toolkit functions can be found in chapter one, section one. I have a link in the description if you guys wanna uh, look at those textbooks. However, I'm just gonna try to show you guys how to get to original functions and just memorize what they look. It's very, very simple. For k of x equals x minus two cubed minus one, your original function, and what you're gonna do for every time that you're trying to look for an original function, is strip away all of the big numbers, like minus two, get rid of that, minus one, get rid of that. You only care about what's happening to the x value. And in this case, the x, if I strip away this minus two, it's actually being raised to the third. So this original function was k of x equals x to the third. Okay. Now here comes the memorization part. You guys should know what x to the third, the function of x to the third looks like. Always start from the origin and it kind of has like a little squiggly to it, all right? So it will squiggle downward, kind of like wee, like that. And then it will squiggle upward as well. Crazy graph, but that is x cubed. Now we have to take into consideration what's going on with these um, shifts. So down here, I have tips and tricks as to how to determine the difference between a horizontal shift versus a vertical shift. And horizontal shifts, remember, are to the left and to the right. Vertical is up and down, right? So the, the question is, the numbers, are they inside the function or are they outside the function? Let's look at this minus two. Would this be classified as a horizontal shift or a vertical shift? Well, this minus two is inside the parentheses. And anytime that you see a number inside the parentheses with an X, it's a horizontal shift. And in this case, it's a minus. So we're shifting to the right by that number. So I'm just gonna put it over here. We need to shift to the right this way by two. Okay, now we did this number, right? So that's a check. And now we just have to work on this number. What part is that? Is that inside the actual function or is that outside? It's after the fact, right? It's all the way over here. That is a vertical shift. Minus a number outside of the function is a vertical shift and minus is always shifting downward. So you're going to be shifting down by how much? By one. Now the good thing about horizontal and vertical shifts is that it does not matter which one you do first, you just gotta do both of them. So whether you do a horizontal shift and then do a vertical shift or the vertical shift and then the horizontal, it really doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so for me, I'm going to go to the right two times and then I'll go down one. So let's see, we'll start at the, the origin and let me just make this blue just so that all the blue stay together and then we'll do the red. So this part right here needs to be shifted to the right by two. So it needs to go over two slots, so right here. And now we need to shift down one. So it should end up over here. Now just know that these should be exactly negative one comma negative one and one comma one. So you could also kind of gauge those as well. This one, needs to be shifted to the right twice and then down one. So it will come basically over here. And then the other one following it would be over there. Let me just make this red so that everything matches. Okay. So now do your little squiggies. Squiggy, whoop, squiggy down, Whee. squiggy up. And that's it. There you go. We shifted to the right one down, oh, sorry, we shifted to the right two and down one. And there you go. Let's try this one now. M of t equals three plus the square root of t plus two. Find out your original function. 
Remember, strip away all of your big values. So get rid of this three, bye-bye, get rid of the two. Your original function was only underneath a square root. So your original function should be m of t equals um, just the square root of t. Okay, so let's see. That function, which you guys should just memorize, is always starting at the origin, and then it kind of starts like this. It goes 1 and 1, but then 4 and 2, and then it kind of strips like that. Wee, something like that. There you go. That's the square root of t, or the square root of x, square root of any number. Now, we just have to do our shifts. Okay, I have two numbers here. I have a 3 in the front, and I have a plus 2. Which one is with the function, and which one is after the fact, or outside of the function? Let's look at this plus 2 first. It looks like it's underneath the square root, which means that they're linked together. <gasps> I put a parenthesis there. Any number that's inside of the parenthesis is a horizontal shift. So just know that numbers with your functions are going to be horizontal shifts. So here, I need to shift horizontally. It was a plus, which means that we're shifting to the left. So I need to shift to the left two. So I'm going this way two times. And now I have a plus three. That is outside the function. Now it doesn't matter if you had three plus, like you see here, or this and then plus three. It means the same exact thing. That is going to tell you your vertical shift. This is a plus three plus a number. That's a up shift. So we're going vertically up. So we're going to shift up how many? Three. So let's see. Doesn't matter which one I do, I just got to do the both of them. So I'm going to go to the left two and up three. And I'll do it for the three points. All right. So let's start here. I need to go to the left two. So that's one, two. I'm over here. And then I got to go up three. One, two, three. So I should be over here. Let's do it for this point now. I got to go to the left two and then up three. One, two, three. So I'm over here. And then let's just do it for this one. Got to go to the, the left two, one, two, up three, one, two, three. Yeah, that looks good. Let me just get rid of that. And there you go. Something like that. Perfect. Okie dokie. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you. Like this video if it helped you, and yeah, subscribe to the channel if you want. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I'm making math enjoyable for you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, but anyway, I will see you guys all in the next question. Have a great day. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. Bye-bye.